In this extreme dog fence review, I'll share what I've learned about it throughout the four years I've worked with invisible dog fences, and also what I've learned after using this in-ground dog fence firsthand. I'll show you what's inside the box and cover everything from setting up fences to testing its performance and of course, evaluating it from a dog's perspective. Getting shocked is no fun. Check out the video description for links to any deals that I have, and also for my latest recommendation. Unlike this video, I can update that description after publishing. If you want a reliable invisible dog fence that allows you to set precise boundaries of any shape in yards large or small without paying the hefty price tag of a professionally installed system, then the Extreme Dog Fence is probably your best option. Although if you have a property larger than an acre, you should probably also check out the Spot On. It's high end, but it's really quite impressive. But I want to make it clear right off the bat, I can't advocate using the static correction, also known as a shock, on your dog. As you'll see later in this video, it seriously hurts. That said, I know a lot of dog owners feel that it's a small price to pay to keep their dogs safe from bigger hazards. I'm not here to change your mind. I'm here to tell you objectively how well the Extreme Dog Fence works. So let's get right to it and see what's in the box. Just a heads up, I got the Pro Grade system. So basically this is how it comes packaged from Amazon when you purchase it. It's in a, you know, a shipping box um, and you have your 16 gauge wire here. Of course that varies a little bit, but that's what I purchased. Looks like you also have a smaller spool of some pre-wound wire, so that way you can make basically zones that your dog can actually go across um, without tripping the boundary. Over here are some training flags for your dog. We have some stakes here so that you can keep the wire stapled to the ground if you would like to, as opposed to burying the wire. And then we have, can't remember what these are. Those plastic yellow devices are waterproof junctions for connecting the wires. They're filled with an electrolytic gel that passes current, so you basically stick the stripped wires in either side to make a connection. And then over here we have the actual box for the extreme dog fence and inside we have the transmitter so that's where the fence actually plugs in that's where you control the whole system there also in the box is the owner's guide here and here is the collar for the extreme dog fence as you can see it comes with some prongs for static correction uh, already installed should you choose to use it, it looks like there's a, a small battery here perhaps for the collar uh, replacement. There's also a second set of prongs, perhaps for shorter haired dogs. You have some mounting hardware if you want to mount the controller to the wall. And then here you have the power block for the Extreme Dog Fence transmitter. Before we move on to setting up the Extreme Dog Fence, I want to mention that as with any invisible dog fence, you'll need to train your dog prior to using it. It's not something where you can just put on the collar and let your dog run. They need to learn how the system works first. Extreme Dog Fence recommends a training program that works through six lessons with your dog over the course of about three weeks. They recommend working with your dog for about 10 to 15 minutes twice per day until he or she is comfortable with the fence boundaries. Now, let's dive into setting up fences with the Extreme Dog Fence. Let's start with some quick theory. You're going to be creating one long loop of wire to set the boundary of the fence. A single strand of wire will behave as a fence boundary, whereas twisted wire will act as a segment of the fence where the boundary is deactivated. So basically, you're going to start with a length of twisted wire coming off your transmitter, which is mounted in a dry place safe from the elements. And then that twisted wire will run into where it connects with your fence. Even if you decide to bury the wire, which is probably the better solution for the long haul, you'll want to lay out and connect the entire wire for your fence first. This prevents having to dig it back up should anything not go according to plan. And let's be honest, how often do things go exactly as planned? Now, technically you don't have to bury the wire, and the Extreme Dog Fence comes with ground staples if you prefer to just work it into the landscaping. But an unburied wire is more susceptible to damage, and it could also be a tripping hazard. Side note, those staples also help with keeping the wire taut as you're laying out the boundary. As you're planning it out, if you want to make any keep out zones inside the fence, like to protect a vegetable garden for example, you'll want to create a loop of twisted wire from that boundary to that keep out zone and back, so that your dog can still pass over the twisted wire. Also, the owner's guide mentions doing a double boundary, so basically you do one loop first and then a second one outside that. The owner's guide is a little bit unclear as to why, and I find that the manual is generally a bit lacking, but I think this would be to extend the zone where the caller is issuing warnings and correction. Unlike wireless systems which keep issuing corrections beyond the boundary, a wired system just has a connection zone on either side of that wire. All right, so that's the framework in a nutshell. Let's see what it was like setting up the transmitter. All right, so to set up your extreme dog fence, the first thing you're gonna want to do is obviously mount the receiver in a dry safe place you know it's going to be plugged in it's going to be powering this whole fence with electricity you want to make sure to mount it properly next thing you're going to want to do is to run your boundary wire in practice what you're going to want to do is have you a twisted cable coming out of here which you know your dog can pass both ways um, without getting any sort of correction and then basically you're going to want to tie your actual boundary fence into that but i'm just going to go right into here for testing purposes basically how you connect the boundary to the extreme dog fence is to open up the case here there are these three screws and your boundary wires are going to go onto these two screws here and then this is a ground wire here
and we should be good to go. And then let's plug this in over here. And as you can see, it is now on and it's actually blinking the numbers 10. And let's hang on for a second here, I'll come right back. So when I first powered this up, it was beeping and flashing and I looked in the manual and that's indicative that there's a problem. First thing I did was I tried twisting these cables for the boundary that I created here, which did not solve the problem. What did solve the problem was moving the boundary cables. I had them on this contact and this contact and the ground over here. But you can see on the circuit board that here we have loop, ground loop. So really the middle one here is the ground and these are the, these are the boundary loops here. That is what it says in the manual here. The picture's just a little bit blurry, so I read it wrong. Uh, apologies for that. Once you have the transmitter wired, you can set the range of the boundary zone. This basically sets how far the signal reaches from the wire in either direction. All right, so with the receiver turned on here, you can see that you can set the boundary distance in feet. It, by default, it's set at 10. I'm gonna run it a little bit lower than that. But basically what this means is that the total signal area, right now it's at seven, for example, is seven feet. So that means if you have your boundary wire here, the total area from, you know, on this side and on this side uh, of the signal is going to be seven feet. So you basically have three and a half feet on this side of the wire and three and a half feet on this side of the wire here. So that's what the boundary distance means here. So I'll show you how the fence performed in my field testing in just a bit here, but first I want to go over how the fence works as well as some of the benefits and drawbacks of the system. Basically, the transmitter sends a radio signal through the boundary wire, and the caller will beep and administer a correction once it gets close enough to the wire to pick up that radio signal. It's kind of like walkie-talkies. If the caller and the boundary are close enough together, they can talkie. If your dog stays in the correction zone for over 15 seconds, the caller will time out as a safety feature. And as mentioned earlier, the caller will stop correcting if your dog continues past the boundary on the other side of the wire. Now, one of the biggest advantages of the extreme dog fence is that you have quite a bit of control over the shape of the boundary, unlike wireless systems that don't use a GPS. You're also a bit less susceptible to interference than a non-GPS wireless system. The only thing you really need to watch out for is utility lines running parallel to the boundary in close proximity. The extreme dog fence can be used with unlimited collars too, so if you have a pack that rivals the 101 Dalmatians, you only need to buy additional collars for each dog. Which would get expensive if you had 101, don't get me wrong. And last, the system is made here in the United States, which I love. Maybe it's not all that strong of a buying factor for everyone, but I thought it was worth mentioning. On the opposite side of the coin, the extreme dog fence is far from a portable system. I guess you could technically do it, but it's really not designed for that. And burying a wire will almost certainly be a huge time sink, especially if you have a larger yard. I'm also not a huge fan of the fact that the boundary doesn't continue indefinitely past the wire like you get with wireless and GPS fences, nor the fact that the battery is proprietary, although they do say it should last about three to four months. Anyway, those are the biggest points. Let's see how the extreme dog fence performed during my field testing. All right, so now I'll we'll test the collar here, and hopefully you can hear it. But basically, as we approach the boundary, it'll start to beep, and you can see the boundary right there. So if we back up, and if we go again, right there is the boundary. So it's fairly consistent with where it's triggering the boundary. Now, it's supposed to be giving warning tones, but I've had it on my fingers a few times here, and it just seems to go right to the correction. I'm not sure if the warning is ultrasonic. Uh, I'll have to look into that. I'm not seeing it in the manual. The manual does seem to be a bit lacking, again, um, in terms of what it has to offer for information. Um, and I'm just gonna approach the boundary here right now with my fingers on the prongs, um, because every time I've done this so far, it does just give me that static correction right away. Uh, no sort of warning. So let's see here. Yep, so there is like a half a second when those beeps are shorter and it's not issuing the static correction, and then once the beeps speed up, it does issue that static correction. It's not like I'm moving closer to the boundary. Once I hear that, I'm stopping, and uh, so basically there's no warning. But it is at least consistent with where the boundary is signaling here. So I just tried increasing the range, basically, of the fence, and it does seem like I'm getting the same behavior. It does seem like it always gives these first two warning beeps, which is not very much time to respond. You know, right after that, it does go into the, the static correction. Um, which you know is quite strong on my fingers here so not so much looking forward to to putting it on my neck here but that is what we do so i guess it's time so as you can see the boundary enforcement is pretty reliable it seems a bit more precise than the wireless systems with where the boundary actually starts which makes sense because it's relying on a physical wire i really don't like how the caller doesn't give any significant warning before issuing that static correction ideally the caller should give your dog a chance to get back in the safe zone before issuing correction 
By contrast, the spot-on GPS dog fence and similar collars utilize alert and warning tones prior to triggering the correction, so your dog has plenty of warning before crossing that boundary line. Now, this review wouldn't get my stamp of approval unless I evaluated the extreme dog fence from a dog's perspective, so let's see what happens when I wear the collar. By default, the static correction on the extreme dog fence is set at 5, which is the highest setting. The static correction level is set by pushing and holding both buttons on the receiver for 3 seconds. The display will show double zeros, at which point you can release the buttons and set your desired level using the top scroll button. Press the bottom set button to confirm your setting. You can set the static correction from as low as zero, which is tone only, to as high as five. And actually there's a six and a seven with the active color like I have. Six and seven are progressive settings that start with a lower static correction intensity and move up as it continues. The hyper colors also allow for a setting of eight, which is a third progressive setting, but I left it at the default setting of five. Let's roll. All right, so here I am playing dog, doing my absolute favorite part of my job, and that is getting shocked by these shock collars. Just kidding, it's actually pretty terrible and I'm sure that your dog probably feels pretty similar. But let's see what it feels like to get shocked with the extreme dog fence here. And I have the collar set at the default static correction setting level five. And I believe just from testing the boundary earlier and having it correct on my fingers that it's plenty strong. So let's see how it goes here. Approaching the boundary. Oh God, whoa. Oh God, whoa. Definitely the strongest one I've tried so far. Very, very strong. So turn that down to start with, absolutely. If you're gonna use this, I absolutely recommend not using it because it's very painful as I just felt. And I say that in all my videos, not a huge fan of static correction as a training method. Default setting's pretty strong, think I got that. Don't wanna belabor the point too much, but um, yeah, wow. So yeah, that static correction hurt pretty bad. Again, I really can't advocate using it on your dog. And if you choose to, just keep in mind how painful it is. Remember to check out the video description for my latest recommendations and links to any deals that I have. You can check out more reviews and comparisons of invisible dog fences right here in this channel, and I'll leave my review of the spot on GPS dog fence playing right here. Until next time, dog lovers, keep those tails wagging.